today I'm going to be giving an overview of how I implemented portals in the Godot engine. This video isn't going to be a tutorial because the full implementation is about 600 lines, but I will include a link in the description for the code for you to use yourself. At its core, most of the code for the portals is actually pretty simple to implement. Each portal renders the view of a camera that is placed at the opposite portal. We get the player camera's position and rotation relative to the first portal. Then we position the portal's camera at the same relative position and rotation to the second portal. Similarly, when a player walks through a portal, we take their position and rotation relative to the first portal and make it relative to the second portal to get the correct location to teleport them to on the other side. If you're interested in hearing a bit more of an in-depth explanation of the intuition and math behind portals, I would highly recommend Sebastian Logg's Coding Adventure Portals video. So here's the final setup in Godot. Each portal has a camera 3D, which is rendered to a sub-viewport by adding it as a child. Then, I'm using a CSG box 3D for the actual visual portal mesh, and the material is assigned a viewport texture. We set it to the camera viewport, and now we can pass it into the shader. It's an extremely simple nine lines of code shader. We set it to unshaded to ignore all lighting, so we can directly draw whichever colors the camera is seeing onto the portal with no post-processing. Then we have our sampler 2D texture, Texture Albedo, which is a uniform exposed for us to pass the viewport texture to. Then we do the rest in the fragment shader, which is called once for every pixel that the mesh is covering. We're not interested in any texture coordinates, so we just grab the screen UV, which is the XY position of the window or monitor itself rather than the polygon. Now that we know the position on the screen we're drawing to, we can use that to get the appropriate pixel in the camera viewport. We grab the correct pixel with the texture function and then set the albedo to that RGB color. Combined with this bit of code, the visual effect of one portal acting as a window to the other portal is complete. We grab the currently active camera, which would be the player camera before proceeding to the function. Then these two lines get the camera's position and rotation relative to this portal and move it to the other portal using some 3D matrix math which I do not understand. Basically we multiply by the inverse of this portal's global transform with the camera's global transform which gives us the camera's transform relative to this portal. Then we multiply the other portal's global transform by that relative transform to give us the global transform of the camera moved to the other portal. Hopefully that makes sense. The rest of the function, I'm mainly setting up variables on the portal's camera and viewport and making sure they are exactly the same as the settings on the player camera and the main viewport. So keeping the resolution exactly the same, keeping the anti-aliasing settings exactly the same, and also keeping the FOV exactly the same. This is necessary to prevent any artifacts or slight visual differences between the view inside of the portal and the actual view of what it would look like when you pass through the portal. In addition to keeping all the camera settings the same, you need to make sure you're not applying the tone map twice, which this is what it looks like if you apply the tone map twice. Tone maps are used in games to shift the colors of the pixels that are drawn on the screen to simulate how our eyes see light and shadow. The tone map is applied once to the camera viewport and then it's also applied again when we draw the main viewport for the entire game. So this results in it being applied twice, so the, the shift is applied twice and then it gives that overly bright look. The tone map is set on the environment of the camera, so my solution was to duplicate the environment on the player camera and then just set the tone map mode to linear, which means don't apply the tone map. For handling teleporting, I made each portal an area 3D, which keeps track of physics objects which enter and leave its area. Here's the function I'm using to determine if any physics bodies have passed through the portal this frame. It uses the dot product to check which side of the portal every body is on, and if that's changed from last frame. If a body has been detected that it has passed through the portal, I use this function to teleport it to the other portal. For teleporting, we use the same logic as we do for positioning the camera of getting the position and rotation relative to this portal and then moving it over to the other portal. We also need to do similar with the velocity as in make it relative to the other portal. So we rotate the velocity by the difference in rotations of the two portals. 
And with all that code, the effect is pretty much complete. We get a very smooth transitioning between portals. Can't tell, everything is visually exactly matched up and we're teleported at the perfect time. Currently though, the illusion will be broken if there's any objects obstructing a portal camera's view to the other portal. Currently, because of how Godot works, this problem is not solvable in the default build of the engine. Luckily, there are some pull requests currently open by the community to add this function to Godot. This pull request allows us to override the projection matrix of the camera, which we'll need to fix the portals. You can download and compile the branch mentioned in the pull request, which is based on Godot 4.2. Compiling Godot is actually way easier than anything else I've ever compiled. It just requires one line in the terminal to get the entire engine to compile. If you're on Windows, it should only take about two lines because you can use Scoop, which is a package manager that allows you to download Godot's dependencies. I was also able to copy this function from the creator of the pull request repository demonstrating how it works. This function uses a technique from a research paper which shows how to modify a camera's near clip plane by modifying its projection matrix. We can utilize the camera 3D set override projection function which that pull request introduces. Combined with the set projection oblique near plane function that I just showed, we can use that to introduce a near clipping plane to the camera to hide any objects that are going to be obstructing it. Now calling that function before we render every frame and updating the camera's near clip plane, the box no longer obstructs our vision through the portal. The current implementation works pretty well for going through the portal's first person. But my initial goal in creating this was to use it for a multiplayer game, so it also needs to be seamless when you see other players go through it as well. Because the player is still on the other side of the portal, you'll see it clipping through and showing the inside of the mesh. We can solve this by creating a duplicate of the player's mesh and rendering it at the other side of the portal. Whenever a new physics body enters a portal's area, I create a mesh duplicator object. The mesh duplicator is a class I created to recursively copy over all relevant properties to a second mesh. A copy is created and then the transform and visible properties are synchronized for all children in the tree recursively on the duplicate object. Then I also check if there's a skeleton existing in the original object as is common for character body 3Ds. To get the duplicate meshes to move in sync we set the skeleton property on each of the duplicate meshes to the original meshes skeletons. We do the same with external skeleton for the bone attachment 3Ds. And with that the illusion is complete. Our duplicate mesh makes other players passing through the portals appear seamless as well. Now we're ready to create fun and seamless illusions like this one all in multiplayer. This implementation isn't perfect, but I hope someone at least found it useful, and I will be including the source code in the description so you can use it in your own projects.